everybody, this is your host Jason, and today is again a solo one because I just uh, I saw a movie that was very interesting to me and it gave me just a wonderful topic. I'm going to obviously use this topic. Um, we're going to be talking about the Joker movie, not like a review because we don't do that here. You, you got to go to other places to get reviews, you know what I mean? But I want to touch on a, sop- a topic that they did mention in the thing. I have to say a disclaimer first. This will not be a spoiler-filled thing. It's just a, a look into some topics that were raised in the actual movie, essentially. And just reflect on it a little bit. Also, another disclaimer. I know there was a lot of controversy around the movie being like a like an incel thing and all that stuff. We're not going to talk about any of that crap because, full disclosure, I don't care about any of that crap to be honest with you, because I feel like you should just watch a movie to enjoy it. I know movies with deeper meanings, I get that, I understand, but like, I feel like people are trying to extrapolate, extrapolate, whatever, a plot that wasn't supposed to be there. The guy was trying to make a movie about a crazy man, because I remember the director said, essentially, that he wanted to make a real movie, as he calls it, off of, with with a superhero budget essentially, so $50 million at least, and a lot of people were upset about this, they're like, oh, he doesn't think that this is, you know, Marvel movies, real movies, blah, 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 y'all don't care about that, everybody's held opinion, like, they really do, like, when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'll get back on topic, when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I find a few of their movies to be artistic, and a few movies to be popcorn flicks that are not really uh, what you would call you know, thought-provoking. Most are not thought-provoking. And I think that's kind of what he meant. None of these movies are thought-provoking. They're just popcorn flicks like Michael Bay stuff. And on that, if that is the actual lean he was going toward, I agree. Not in a bad way, because all those movies, every um, situation in your life has, like, a different type of movie that you want to see. Like, sometimes when you're sad, you want to see a certain type of movie. Sometimes when you're happy, you want to see a certain type of movie. Sometimes you want to see a comedy, action comedy, adventure. So it's, it's fine that not all movies are artistic but this uh, the topic i'm going to talk to is about today we are talking about loneliness because that was a major theme in this movie loneliness because i'll tell you right now uh, loneliness is a subject that i know all too well about because it's a specific kind like it's it's looked at as like a symptom of depression and i agree with that wholeheartedly but i'm looking at just loneliness because you can feel true loneliness without having the rest of the symptoms it can be like a loneliness can be a symptom of your surroundings which is a different form of it like a different form of depression and it's you don't necessarily have to have clinical or anything like that to to uh basically understand and feel loneliness i speak from personal experience because i feel loneliness i don't want to say like i feel loneliness all the time because that just I don't want that to be the narrative of this episode, but I will say that I will, I have felt loneliness a lot more than I should have, if that makes sense, or should. My type is kind of similar to the one in the movie where it's like I'm surrounded by people, but it feels like I'm separated from the situation. It feels like things are going on around me and I'm just there, like I'm a... I'm a witness to what's going on. I am an, uh, in the audience of things around me. And it makes me feel uncomfortable and at times very, very sad because it's one of those things where I would like to be a part of the festivities, but I either feel like I'm incapable of it or I don't have a desire to. It's weird. It pulls you in two different directions. You want to rejoice and, and have fun with these people, but at the same time, you don't. And the fact that you don't makes you feel sad because you wish you were a part of the scenario or were a part of the activities but at the same time you don't which is a weird thing if you really think about it but it's how it feels because a lot of people don't understand that emotions emotions either emotions basically work in a weird way emotions override your logical parts of your brain where it's basically Your brain can rationalize something. And your emotions are so powerful and so potent that they alter your chemicals to make you feel a completely different way. And it can even alter what you think 
to make you think scenarios differently actually actually are. You ever been so angry at somebody that you create things that they've done and you blame them for it, even though if you thought about it for a second, it can't possibly be their fault? Yeah, that's how that works. It works in a very similar vein where you're blaming people for things that are inherently not their fault. Same thing with loneliness. You feel that it's your fault that this is going on. You feel that you're the reason that you're by yourself, that nobody spends time with you, all those things. And in reality, that's not necessarily true. It's just in your head. But that's how loneliness works. It makes it feel like it's your fault you're experiencing this, and that makes it twice as bad. That's what makes depression and loneliness so bad, because it's one thing if you feel a certain type of way, and... You don't know what that type of way is, but you feel sad. It's another that you feel that type of way. And your brain convinces you that it's your fault you feel this type of way. And it comes up with reasons and rationales for that. That is a scary thing, but it's a real thing. It happens. I know plenty of people it happens to other than myself. Me, if I were to break it down, I think besides being tired... My main emotional response is is that is the loneliness, and it can be problematic. Like even in the movie, like for example, um, he wanted to make people smile, and they did say that people with depression are people who feel you know alone, separated. They want to make other people smile and feel better because they don't want people to feel the way they feel. They want to go out of their way to brighten someone's day because innately. They feel awful. We feel awful. But we don't want anyone else to feel that way. And that's that's sad but beautiful at the same time. The fact that you're feeling awful, but you want your first thought is to make sure that other people don't feel that way. To me, that's a sign of a good soul. That's a good person. A good person can can look past themselves and immediately think of others. I think that's the only silver lining of these medical and mental you know ailments these mental issues these these diagnoses is the fact that if you are truly a good person you try everything you can to make sure no one else feels that way you want to bring joy to the world they always it, it i hate using jokes about it but there's an old joke that my uncle used to tell he said a depressed there's no such thing as a depressed uh oh no no, no i'm sorry <laughs> i messed the joke up already the joke says, if a comedian isn't depressed, is he really a comedian? Basically saying that a happy comedian is not really a comedian. It's, an, it's something that doesn't exist. It's less real than a unicorn. And I have to agree with them. The funny people I know, they deal with some real stuff. I'm a funny dude myself. I like to love to make people laugh. But that's actually to the point where like, when I make people laugh, it's to hide my actual emotional response. I could be pissed off. I could be sad. I could be tired. I could be annoyed. I could be all kinds of things. And I use my natural sarcasm and natural wit, I guess, and humor to subvert uh, people's expectations of me. They think that I'm always serious. Or some people meet me like, oh, he's a really sweet, you know, but he's serious. He never smiles. I make them smile even when I do my dry pan humor. I have dry pain humor, angry humor, sarcastic humor, and it just it gets people to laugh. I subvert the narrative of how people what people think of me because I had this fear that if people actually knew who I was, I was you know sad so so much of the day. It's like fifty percent of the day, and so lonely, so lonely. I felt alone, all that stuff that they wouldn't want to be around me. So I became I harnessed my 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 funniness. To create a sense that, oh, this guy is hilarious. He's always happy. He's always together. And I want to be around him. And that's good because people want to be around me all the time. But the bad thing is, even with all these people always around me, constantly surround me, constantly giving me praise, love, admiration, all that stuff, I can feel sad. I can feel dejected. I can feel alone. I can tell you right now. I feel that a lot. Anybody with that can tell you they feel the same. Feeling alone, feeling sad, 
those compound. You can get depression off of that. You can develop it because you feel like you don't belong. And that's something I can relate to. Though I'm surrounded by all these people, whether it's strangers, friends, family, I can I feel alone a lot of the time. That I'm just kind of there, that I don't fit in. I think that ties into the fact that if you listen to the show for a while, that I'm like adopted. So essentially, my family is what I put together. So like my sister, she she was also adopted, but she fit right in. She nobody can tell her from difference from any other family member. She is like right in, locked in. Me on the other hand, I'm standoffish. I keep to myself. I'm over here. And that's had some negative repercussions. I've, my family's never pushed me to the side, but they've never gone out of their way to make me feel included, if that makes sense. Or like they love me and they, you know, they talk to me when they see me, but they don't talk to me all the time. And I'm not slighting them because they all have busy lives and that doesn't, and that means they shouldn't have to like, Oh, let's go check up on Jason and see what he's up to because that's, that's BS. I think that's not something they should have to do. That being said, it's one of those cases where, in my head at least, I feel like an afterthought. And that's the biggest kicker. When you are truly um, lonely, when you're truly beaten down or you feel beaten down, you create things in your head. Like I said earlier, you create narratives that just... That may not be true and often aren't true. I felt like an outcast, even though there was no real signs that I was an outcast. My family loved me. They always they checked up on me. They asked me how I was doing. They remembered everything that I would have said. And that compounds it because you feel like an asshole because you created and concocted a story of how you think they feel about you. And then you find out it's not a real story. None of it's real. You just made it up. So you get angry at yourself. You feel... Like, you don't deserve people now because you're creating these fake stories. You see how that, that the cycle starts? You believe something. It's disproven. You feel bad because you believed it. And now you're in a different cycle. And it just kind of repeats where you're like, okay, maybe I am like this. Maybe they're starting to feel this way about me. Even the smallest, smallest things you think, instead of being just nothings, you think they're microaggressions where people are trying to hint at their real feelings toward you. And it's weird because no matter how much you rationalize, every once in a while, that feeling will slip through and you'll start thinking, maybe they don't like me. And you get sad. You feel alone. When you're around them, you just, you don't, you don't fit like you, you don't feel like you fit in. You feel like you're just there. I can relate to that. I, a lot of times I feel like I'm just there. And that can be a really scary thing. It can be really sad that. When you come out of it, for people who haven't experienced uh, sadness, loneliness, things like that, it's it's like being drunk. When you're drunk, in that time frame, that small window where you're actually drunk in consciousness, keyword unconscious, when you're drunk, you look at the world so differently. You look at the world through a lens of yourself. You have your own outlook on reality. And you ever have people talk to you while you're drunk and you respond in horrible ways and you don't remember what they say, what they're saying, or you remember it differently. You're interpreting differently and reacting. It's like that. And the worst part is when you wake up the next morning, you feel awful just like if you're drunk. You feel awful for how you reacted to it because you snap out of it. When you snap out, it's like waking up from being drunk. You snap out and you're like, why would I think that? There's no reason I should think that. There's no reason I should act like that. I'm an asshole. And the cycle begins again. It's a ferocious cycle. And I know this part where I'm supposed to explain to you what you should do about it. And I had a funny quip to say, nothing at all. But in some seriousness, some serious moment, all you can do is understand that's how you behave sometimes. You have to understand. Because that's the key thing in this whole show. Self-understanding. True growth happens when you shake off the shackles of fear. That's where true growth happens. Because that's all it is. It's You have to better yourself every time. Every single time you have to be slightly better than you were the day before. And when it comes to feeling lonely, you may never shake that off completely. It may just be a part of you. But your reaction 
you can always control your reaction to your emotions. So in saying that, you can learn to smile through it. You can learn to force yourself. That's a big thing. You have to force yourself to interact with people, like genuinely interact with them. I'm not talking that fake Oh, how are you doing today? I mean, genuinely, like, how was your day? Giving, you know, uh, me, I don't like physical contact, even though it's, I don't like initiating physical contact, but I will accept a hug. Me and my best friend, we, we don't hug. We never have hugged. So I try to hug her now. And she tries to hug me so we can break that, so we can change. And it's actually pretty warm. I like hugs i love the full bodies i love all that stuff it's nice i force myself to go hang out with her she forced herself to go hang out with me because we both experience extreme bouts of loneliness because we just feel like we don't have a friend in the world and even though we are friends ourselves i've had cases where me and her have been lonely together which sounds wild but like i said you can be lonely in a room full of people because what people don't realize is Being lonely is not the same thing as being alone. I know that sounds weird or it either sounds preposterous or you've heard it a million times, but it's true. You can be in a room all by yourself but not feel lonely. And the flip can be true. You can be in a room full of people but feel like you're the only person in the world. Because loneliness is a state of mind. Loneliness is an emotional response. It's a feeling. It literally is a feeling. It's like happiness. Happiness is a feeling. Loneliness is a feeling. And that's the kicker. When you know it's a feeling, it's an emotional response, you can do something about it. You can address it. You can come with a plan to deal with it. You can see what you're doing in your lifestyle to change it, affect it. That's the best part of loneliness. The best part of loneliness is that you can do something about it because it's an emotional thing. Emotions can be tamed. They can be trained. Or at least they can be adjusted or understood. And understanding an issue... Like I've said a million times on here, makes the issue much easier to manage. And that's the beautiful part of it all. Well, everybody, I'll keep going, but it is super late here, and I just wanted to get off my soapbox. This is not a spoiler thing of Joker, but I have to say that that movie's touch on true loneliness is great. Loneliness, despair, all that good stuff. And you have to, I'd say, watch it. It's done at this point, like, 250 mil. I go watch it. It's a really dark movie, trust me. And it's gonna it's gonna make you really think about your emotional and mental state. I'll tell you that much. But it was a lovely movie. I went to go see it on my date night. It was fantastic. I recommend it. Highest of highs. It actually cracked my top five comic movies that I enjoy. I don't ever say favorite, because favorite is such a weird word to me. I say that I enjoy the most. I know that sounds like splitting hairs because it totally is splitting hairs. When I say favorite, people get like, what are you talking about? You didn't like this, this, this. Well, I liked it, but it ain't my favorite. So I say the movies I enjoy the most, the repeat value, because I don't watch movies twice. If I watch a movie twice, it's a good movie. I know it sounds weird, but maybe I'll do movie reviews again one day on a different channel. Maybe not. Who knows? But anyway, uh, please check us out. Uh, Emotions and podcast we are on twitter at emotions and s h h h we are on all listening prod platforms from spotify to iHeartRadio to speaker to Castbox, itunes to google play etc 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 and uh check us out i'm actually going to start posting on our instagram more often because i feel like that's something i should probably start doing so I'm going to start doing it. I know I have that grumpy voice on, but yeah. And I'm going to start tweeting out some random things. My, uh, our, our official Twitter is super dry because I don't know. I don't even know what to be tweeting for the show. But I got my friend told me to tweet what we talk about on this show. So let me know if you got any questions or you got something that I want to talk about a topic. Tweet at us. Emotions and S-H-H-H. Check it out. Bye-bye.